I learned my ethic of care for and stewardship of the earth from growing up in Davis, California. But I also had really influential teachers, uh, science teachers at the sixth grade level who really got me thinking about the world in a different way, as well as teachers at the university level. I was an undergraduate at Yale College and I, and I went in thinking I wanted to be a comparative linguist. At the time I probably had learned six to seven languages and I adored languages and just wanted to do that for the rest of my life. And then I had to take a distribution requirement in science. And when I did do that, I realized that I loved science. I'm the director of the Center for Biodiversity and Conservation. And the center's mission is to mitigate critical threats to biological and cultural diversity around the world. So we work in many, many places around the world. Um, and in each place, we try to tailor the activities that we do to the needs of communities, governments, decision makers about biodiversity conservation. I think one of the most important projects that we've put together since I came here to the museum is a project that we have in building capacity around the world. And the idea behind the project, which is called the Network of Conservation Educators and Practitioners, is that many of us get trained at the university level about what the ecological or evolutionary system might look like from a theoretical perspective. And then we're in the field and we have to make a decision and we don't actually know what happens on the ground. We're not trained in the practical application of some of those ideas, techniques. And so what we try to do is to unite people who are doing the teaching and training of future practitioners with the people who are currently on the ground doing biodiversity conservation work. I first went to Madagascar as a doctoral student. I was at Yale University and I was uh, getting a degree in, in environmental studies and anthropology. And I was studying one of the primates that lives in Madagascar, a nocturnal animal, only comes out at night. And I was living on a tiny uninhabited island off the coast of Madagascar in a tent for two years. I was studying a lemur called the ayai, which is um, one of the most unusual animals in the entire world. It has bat-like ears and a fox-like tail. A couple times, the animals would cross across a canopy when two trees would meet. The animals would be able to either just uh, walk from branch to branch or have a tiny little jump from branch to branch where the canopies are meeting high above, but we are down on the ground. And on these, uh, these mountainous areas, often there would be a huge cavern that you'd have to jump across with all the telemetry equipment and everything on your back. Sometimes we'd go back in the daylight to measure the trails where we went, because this was before we had G uh, GPSs. We just basically would mark our trail like um, Hansel and Gretel. And we would look down into these you know, 10 feet, 20 foot deep, deep canyons at, at, on the morning afterwards and say, oh my gosh, are you kidding? I jumped that in the middle of the night. Uh, but that was the only way to keep up with them, so.